Hello and welcome to Wager on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and in today's video, we're going to go through concepts for a shots on goal model. Now, this model is not going to beat a book, so please do not copy it exactly as is and then try and implement it to try and make some bets with this. These are just concepts that you can work with. Some of these concepts I'm still currently playing around with. Some of them I have implemented in my actual shots on goal model. So please be very cautious with this. Do not bet with this. Just learn from this if you can and try and adapt ideas from this into your own situation. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the shots on goal model. So we're gonna briefly go through some ideas that you can use for a shots on goal model. Now this model that I'm gonna show isn't going to exactly beat the book. It is a good guideline though for ways that you can try and account for certain things. I'm gonna have to zoom in because there's a lot of information going on in here. Uh, so let me clean some of this up really quick for you. All right. Now, if you do see these lines through numbers, that means that there needs to be a recalculation. So Microsoft Excel will now do this where it's going to basically show what numbers are in a formula and need to recalculate if you've made any modifications. So I'll just hit F9 and it's gonna run through the sheet right now, recalculate everything. Now, if I click into a cell and click out again, those are gonna say, oh, you need to recalculate something changed. So I just have the formula set to manual because there's a lot of formulas in this sheet and I don't want it to create too much latency. So here we're gonna have some player information, defense information, some average and median info. Now in here, you're gonna see where maybe the label says average, but if you look at the formula, it says median. It's because when I was building this, I was playing around with some different ideas and rather than swapping out labels, I was just testing it by changing out the formulas on the fly. You can use the average or the median, depends on what you're trying to actually project to. So that is completely up to you. So the way I built this, rather than typing in a player's name every single time, I have a sheet in sheet two where it is going to list all of the player's names, their shots on goal, and the odds for that bet. So here I just have the number running in E14. So I have all the players in that sheet. So if I change this number and we'll say we'll go to row number 59, hit enter, the lines are going to go through because it needs to recalc. So I'm just going to say go ahead and manually recalc. It's going to recalculate all of these items and now you can see there's a new player, new probabilities, new values everywhere. So that's how I do it so that I don't have to constantly change out the player name and then I can just write down quickly in a column the outcomes and the expectations. So in here I have the player name. I pull in what position they play. Now some of this information you know, can be useful, maybe you don't find it as useful, but again this was a model that I was toying around with some ideas. Some of them worked favorably, some of them did not. I pull in the player's average shots on goal, their median shots on goal. I'm also collecting their total shots and then how many shots actually made it on goal from a shot. So a shot can be anything that I take a blast at the net and maybe it gets blocked, maybe it goes off the crossbar, maybe it goes completely wide, right? Those are just shots. They're not shots on goal because they didn't make it on net or if the goalie wasn't there, right, it wouldn't have scored a goal. So I want to figure out how well does this person actually hit the net area and try and get a shot on goal versus them just launching the puck in. Then I'm going to pull in their average time on ice. I'm going to get the average shots on goal a minute. Um, let's go ahead and slide over here. Then we have the estimated minutes that I think this player is going to be on the ice for. We have their standard deviation of shots on goal and the standard deviation of minutes that people are on a rink. Now let's come back again over here. Now we're gonna pull in also the actual amounts of shots on goal that a team allows for based upon their position. Now in hockey, players can float around in positions. Just because I'm a center doesn't mean I can't be playing more of a left wing, right wing defense, right? Everybody's constantly moving. It's a very fluid game, but some of this information might be relevant for you. You might be able to use it and change how you're predicting things. But here we have centers take 28% of the shots on goal. Defense have 27%. Left wings have 34%. Right wings have 11%. Now that's a little curious. Now is it because that they're often strong sided that side for a defense that they're protecting that side of the zone? Is it because, you know, maybe in the second period that is the board side where the team was going to hop out at? You know, there's a lot of different reasons for this. It just really depends. You want to dive into the data. Here we also then just have F because there are some that are just listed as a forward. They don't have left wing, right wing. They're just a forward. Uh, they play all those positions. 
Then you can do the average shots on goal per minute for that player's position. So here, Adam Fox is a defensive player. So then you have the average minutes of that position, which is about 20.13. So on average, a player that is on defense is gonna be out there for about 20 minutes. Now, there could be different reasons for that, and you can see those values change, and that can also help you decide how you're gonna do the estimate for time that a player's on ice. Often defense may not engage as heavily as the offense, right? Because offense has to do a lot of back checking if they lose it in the zone. There's a lot more skating down low, deep behind the net. They're gonna get fresh legs often faster than the defense. It's easier to change out offense on the fly than it is defense in a lot of different scenarios. So maybe that's gonna impact how you're gonna estimate it. So again, these are values that can be very useful. Then if we take a look at this, we have the defense, right? Who's the defense? Now here, I'm just using the team the goalie really does matter, right? The goalie is very important. Now, I'm just kind of using this as a broader stroke when I was trying to test out some ideas, but I would suggest pulling in the goalie for this. The goalie that they're gonna be shooting against is critical. The reason that the goalie is gonna be critical for a shots on goal is because often some goalies will prefer that their players get out of the way so that they could see a clear shot. They don't want tip-ins or redirects. Right, so they're gonna guide their defense to just slide out of the way and they'll take the shot. Some goalies are gonna prefer that their defense step in and try and take the shot for them. Other goalies are gonna maybe not be playing so strong so the defense feels the need to step in and do a lot more blocks with their own bodies. Now around this again, as far as this leveraging against if it's gonna be a shot on goal or not, maybe the goalie does better at cutting the angles. So there's more wide shots, which means that there's less chances of a shot on goal. But this also can help guide you in trying to do saves and things like that. So here we have the average shots on goal, game for that team or goalie. Uh, what is the league average shots on goal? How many shots on goal per minute does this team allow? Then we do an adjustment where we're gonna take that number here and we're gonna divide it by the median of the league. So that came out to that new number. I'm gonna go ahead and F9. So here we're looking at some of the numbers that this team is allowing for. Right, so this team is going to allow for different positions to shoot different amounts of shots on goal. Now these might be very similar to the ones for the player above for what their team does, but this is what the defense allows for. Now again, this isn't in a direct relationship. It doesn't mean that a defenseman is always gonna take 28% of the shots on goal, because again, this is a very fluid game, right? So again, centers, forwards, they can drop back and play defense. The defenders can play forward and take the shots on goal more aggressively. It doesn't always dictate where the shot is going to be coming from because again, it's very fluid, very quick moving game, but this can be helpful and insightful. So then for the expected shots on goal, this one we're just doing something very basic. We're saying grab the average shots on goal a minute, times that by the expected minutes of play. Then we're gonna adjust that by timing the average shots on goal per minute that the defense allows for and then that will give us a new number where that is gonna be the adjusted shots on goal per minute. So that is going to be those adjusted numbers for shots on goal per minute. So now that we have those, we're just gonna slide over here and look at a simulation that we're doing. So in here, I have it going through and it's gonna be grabbing different information to try and populate some simulations here. So it's gonna be simulating 10 games per row and I have this running, I believe, for 10,000 rows and I'm using things like time on ice, the shots on goal per game, and then a random um, value that is gonna be populated. So it's gonna try and grab and generate a random number of how many shots on goal per game are gonna be occurring. Then it's gonna give me a mean, and then it's gonna give me the median of these numbers. So here we have the mean, here we have the median. Let me come over a little bit more. So what it's gonna be doing is as it's simulating these games, and let me go ahead and grab this and drag this down so we can see the formula. So this is going through and grabbing all of that information and it's grabbing a random number from within there and it's gonna go ahead and populate these values and come up with just a randomized event of occurring, hey, this is how many shots on goal per game that person did. Then we get the average of that info and the median of each row. So then we're gonna go ahead and take the actual average and median of these outcomes. So what we're essentially doing is we're creating a simulation of games based on a subset of information. Now, how a player plays at the beginning of an NHL season, the middle of an NHL season, and the end of an NHL season can vastly differ just because of wear and tear on the body, who they've played against, how teams have adapted, and things like that. 
So using a simulation like this is very helpful. So we're gonna go back over here so you can take a look at what that's doing. So from the simulation of 10 games per row with 10,000 rows, the average was coming out to being about 1.16 shots on goal and the median was 1.5 shots on goal. So now that we have that information, we can take the average from our simulation and then we can go ahead and multiply that by the average that the team allows divided by the league average, which is gonna give us expected shots on goal for that player. So again, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, this is just some of the basic ways that you can try and play around with it. Now in here, this isn't going to beat anything again. Some of these formulas and the ways that I've been building this and thinking through it, they've been modified. So here I'm taking average shots on goal divided by the league average shots on goal to give me kind of like a multiplier event and then multiplying that by what my simulation predicted for this player to do. Now, again, this isn't the best way because you're still missing a lot of uh, opponent information like goalie, you're missing health information, you're missing lineup balancing, um, you're missing uh, probability of getting you know penalties and box time and things like that. So there's a lot of other things that will impact shots on goal, but this is a really good way to start introducing different methods and trying different things out. So that's it for the shots on goal model. Really, there's not that much to it. A lot of these formulas we've seen in other videos and other methods of trying to do some projections and some analysis. So here again, we are really kind of looking at different levels. You can look at the player info, the team info, the goalie info, the positions that are playing on the ice, how often they're on the ice, how often you think your player is going to be on the ice and different things like that. Again, as I noted, some of the things that are missing from this are things like potential for penalties, power plays, going into overtime, things like that. If you found this content useful, insightful, or helpful in any way, or you just like the stuff that I produce, feel free to like and subscribe. That way you are notified as soon as the next video is available. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. You can also reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt or in the unabated Discord as the T. So that is it for today. Until next time, happy wagering.